Hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman, and welcome to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we equip you and challenge you to dare to hear the voice of God. Well, I'm really excited to introduce you to my next guest, who is actually a friend of mine, and her name is Roxanne Worsham. So she was born the middle child of six girls and five boys. And she grew up in a loving Christian home after surviving being run over by a car and dragged 24 feet down the street. Roxanne knew that God had spared her life for a reason. That miracle was pivotal in her life. And she realized from that day forward that God had been preparing her and calling her to ministry. Roxanne is best known for her passion, joy, and sincere love that exudes from every fiber of her being. You're about to see that in just one minute. She is always looking for ways to serve other people and spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. She is the president and founder of Hope and Glory Ministries, where she travels extensively to encourage churches, leaders, and individuals. She is ordained through Joan Hunter's Healing Ministries, and Roxanne and her husband Mills reside in Houston, Texas, and are the proud parents of their son, Rob, and she is a lover of God, a lover of people, and a lover of dogs. Roxanne, welcome to Dare to Hear the Podcast. Good morning. Thank you, Debbie. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you too. And, you know, I thought, I thought everybody always likes to know, well, Debbie, how do you know these people and are they really your friends? So I'm going to tell a little bit of our story, but then we're going to talk about your book. My dog can preach. In fact, I was um, on a mentoring call with somebody and I was telling her about you and about your book because of her dog. And uh, she's like, Oh, I can't wait for that podcast episode. So I was like, I know it's going to be awesome. Okay. So here's, here's how we met. Okay. This is my version. And then you can tell your version. Okay. So I met you in January of 2020 when I was with a group of people, um, in Houston, Texas, and we had come together and we just met briefly at a restaurant for dinner and it was so fun. And you were so full of life. We immediately became friends on Facebook, but that's kind of all it went until this July when we were ministering at a conference together in Coleman, Alabama. And when we were, and when we were in Coleman, Alabama, we were both speakers. We were doing this. We just, we just had a a good time. We had a wonderful, well, we had lots of good food too, to eat, but it was really then that I can say that we became good friends. Like we, we got to know each other because, you know, we were with each other for like five days and people were like, can you really know somebody for five days? Yes. So here's what I say about you. Your bio hits you to a T, but what I've known about you is that you're an evangelist. You're an evangelist at heart. You want everybody to know about Jesus, but you're so full of life. You're so full of love and you exude joy. Like it is so contagious. And then we met there and then you brought me to Houston, Texas. And I got to stay with you and Mills in your home. And we got to do the come and see encounter um, weekend. And it was so fun. It was so fun. So thank you for letting me stay in your home oh and, my goodness. and, and for, I got a copy of your book too. Plus it was on the nightstand. Let, me tell, so you, was let me tell you my version. Okay. Your version. Okay, so that's true. We met it in January of 2020 at that restaurant. Yeah. And I just had met you, but you poured, I'm crying now, Mm -hmm. you poured so much life into me and spoke straight to my heart. And it was such a a healing time for me. Mm -hmm. It was such a time of revelation for me. I felt the Father's love great Mm -hmm. love and care for me through you and through Lisa, through Margie. It was just amazing. Uh, So yes, Coleman, Alabama, fast forward a year and a half. Yeah. And Debbie, I just even saw you like in the same light, but at a greater level, Mm. if that makes sense, like your gifts were just like so sharp and they sharpened me and it was amazing so then having you in my home was like icing on the cake and i miss you every day i love the way you came and ministered to the people here in houston texas and and what an amazing encounter and time we had together that was so fun so i thank you for being my friend i thank you for sharpening me for speaking life into me i thank you for allowing the lord jesus to use all of your gifts for all of his people 
That's beautiful. And I love you just because you're easy to love. Oh, thank you. I had so much fun being with you and Mel's in your home. And I, I kind of took your two bios and I put them together. And I told you this at the beginning, because I thought when I was with you and then, you know, driving down the streets of where that accident was and, and what happened and the miraculous um, thing that God did for you, then it really has carried over into your ministry, hope and glory. And so glory and glory and hope ministries. Oh my gosh. Hope and like, glory, man. Oh, thank you. Hope and glory. <laughs> like, wait a minute. That didn't sound right, Debbie, but I want to talk about this, but I also want to talk about your ministry because you do a uh, prayer and healing nights every Sunday night, right on your Facebook page, which I was a part of, but you pray for the needs of people, but you see miraculous healings. And of course you do because of like what you've experienced and the authority and the territory that you've walked and where you've gained authority in that. And so I want to talk a little bit about that, but first of all, let's talk about my dog can preach. So this is a beautiful devotional with 40 lessons of God's love unleashed. And so first, my first question is, how did it come about and why did you write this book? All right. So back in 2004, okay, I had that little dog that you see on the front named Scout. Mm -hmm. And he would do things and it would just remind me of these like biblical principles and stories that I know from the word of God. And I remember calling my mom on the phone and I said, mom, Scout just did this and it reminded me of that. Or Scout did, you know, something. And I would tell her, and my mother said to me, Roxanne, you need to write all these stories down because one day you may write a book. That was 2004. 2005, my mom went to be with the Lord unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. All right. So 15 more years passed, always had it in my mind. I started writing at different times in my life, but never anything serious. I didn't know how to write a book. um, Anyway, so the great pandemic hit 2020, Mm -hmm. I get laid off of my job. Uh, I had this amazing job. I loved it so much. I get laid off on March the 16th, 316. So I know the father was saying, Hey, I love you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. And uh, so at that moment, I just decided then, you know what? Now's my season. Now's my time. I'm going to write this book. I be to, enrolled in a writing class just to, you know, have some accountability. Yeah. I started writing. My boss calls me back and says, Hey, Roxanne, I want you to come back to work for me. And I was like, oh, man, thank you. But I'm writing a book right now, (laughs) and I just really need to stay in this season. And I kid you not, Debbie, he says, come back to work for me. I'll pay you to write your book. Wow. So I went back to work. I did what I could. I mean, really, the world was still shut down at that point. This was April of 2020. The world was still shut down at that point. I could do, did what I could at work, but I spent eight hours a day writing my book and the Lord just kept bringing stories to me and bringing scripture to me and reminding me of things. I got that book written in record time. I got paid to write it in September. It was going to be released. It was really supposed to be one day on amazon.com. Yeah. It went live on September 26, 2020 on my mother's birthday. Wow. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. God's hand is so intricately involved. If we just number one, invite him to be a part of our lives. And number two, if we look for him. Yes, that's so true. It's so true. And, you know, I, I just think it's so great because, you know, the pandemic really caused a lot of us to refocus and to pivot in a lot of ways. And a lot of people are got accomplished a lot of things that they had put on the shelf or they had been meaning to do. And I love that I've been in your home. And so I got to meet the other dog that you talk about in the book arrow. Um, and so scout obviously is no longer with you, but I got to meet the other one that there's stories in the book, but this is what the introduction, like I'm reading the introduction, Roxanne, and I'm reading the scripture out of Job. And I'm like, how many times have I just brushed past that in reading Job? Because I'm like, wait a minute, that's in the Bible. 
and I'm a pastor, right? You know what I mean? And so right. everybody that's like wondering what scripture did she quote in the introduction of her book? It's Job 12, seven through 10. And this is what it says. Ask the animals and they will teach you or the birds of the air and they will tell you or speak to the earth and it will teach you or let the fish of the sea inform you. Which of these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this in his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. And I'm reading that and I'm like, wow, I didn't know that was, I mean, I've read it. I've read the Bible several times through in a year. I've read the Bible at other times, but I'm like, how did that scripture not stick out to me? So I just thought, I thought it was so great that that's what you started with because I was like, whoa, Roxanne's teaching me something right here. That was such a God moment too, Debbie, because I'd looked up scriptures for animals and I thought I had written them all down just in my research. Yeah. And then one day I I said, man, Lord, I just need something else. How do you want this book to start? That's so good. And I went to Google and searched again and that popped up and I could not even believe it. I couldn't believe it. And then I thought, okay, well, invite the Holy Spirit, submit your plans unto the Lord. And hey, they will succeed. And they will succeed. And you know, here's the funny thing is it you, it's the NIV version, which is the version I read all the time. So it's not like it was a different version that I wasn't familiar with. I'm the NIV girl. That's what I grew up yeah. on. So I'm like, how many times have I read that scripture? But I just kind of breeze past it. But isn't it so great that when you invite the Holy Spirit in, and oh. that was one of the things that um, like, cause you know, I did my research on you, even though I know you, I was reading on your website for the book and I was looking at all the other stuff and you had some Q and a there. And I thought it was great. Cause you just said, I invited the Lord every day to be the person that spoke to me. And I was just the scribe. And I thought that's exactly how it needs to be when we write our books. Cause Mm. I don't want people to read my words. I want people to read the Holy spirit's words. I'm just the vessel in which they get on the page. Right. So, okay. I have so many, you can see all my little, I don't even know if you can see all my little tabs. So uh, first of all, I'm going to let you go first since you're the author. So which of the stories in your book is your favorite? Oh, man. Uh, chapter 17, going to the groomer, even just thinking about it, it just tears me up because it's a message, the world of those that have been cast aside mm-hmm. by society, those have been discounted and discarded. It's a message that they need to hear. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, so I'm like, I'm like, well, which one's my favorite? Which one? I mean, I have so many, like I like chapter n- number 14, which is the importance of rest. <laughs> Cause I'm working mm. on that one. And I want to talk about something out of that in just a minute. And then number 16, which I've called you by name was so good to mm. me. I was like, this is so good. Um, number 19 come with gifts. <laughs> oh my word. I'm like, ah, this is so awesome. Number 20, uh, more is caught than taught. Then mm. number 36 was the hidden treasures. And then number oh. 18. And I think as I was kind of processing it, you know, like there were so many, I mean, there's 40 of these. And so it's a devotional, but what I loved about what you did in this book is it's a devotional that brings a, a, a spiritual principle. And then you had a prayer for everybody for that day. And then you had this time for pause. P-A-W-S, which I thought was so cute, Roxanne. And then, yeah, and it was like, it was like you asked a question and then you gave them space to write their reflection of that question. And I thought, this is such a great book, not just for believers, but really for unbelievers to give them the spiritual truth. And I thought, that's the evangelist, Roxanne, that I know. Because you put things, you are a passionate, fiery preacher, but your whole message is, if they just know the love of Jesus, if they just know the love of Jesus, if they know what he could do for them, then I know they would love him like I do. And that's what I love is so contagious. Like you are so contagious in a good way with your joy, with your love, with your passion, with your fervor. And it, it just comes out. I could hear your voice when I was reading this and I know you have an audio version too, which maybe I'll need to get, but I wanted to talk about number 18, which is bright eyes because I was in your home. And so every morning when I would come out and we were doing breakfast, you would always like, you did this even today, which with arrow and his eyes. So talk a little bit about the number 18 bright eyes. And then, um, and then I'll tell you what I, what I just loved about it and why it really just touched my heart. Uh, With his eye going. Yeah. Yeah. So his left eye was going bad. 
and it is bad still. It's not fixed yet, but I'm believing it is. Yeah. But I have to, uh, you know, wipe some of the sleepy out of his eye and clear up his eye. And we were doing um, Holy Communion every single morning until I found out that grape juice was bad for my dog. <laughs> Oops. But uh, I just lay hands on him and pray over him and mm-hmm. and believe the healing virtues of Jesus Christ over anything. I mean, come on. He's creator of every living thing. Yes, he and is. He cares so much for the little sparrows that fall by the side. How much more does he care for us? Yes. And equally, he as the sparrows, he cares for the our, our pets that comfort us and, and that show us the unconditional love of the Father, like demonstrate it daily. So that's just what I do with him. I lay my hands on him. I pray the mm-hmm. healing virtues of Jesus and uh, we receive communion together. And yeah. uh, and, I, and I love that because I, I actually watched you do that every morning. He would come in and you would wipe his eye and you would pray over him and you would declare the healing power of Jesus over him. And then when I read chapter 18, bright eyes, And I get the backstory of how long this has actually happened. I just thought this is what hope looks like. This is what faith looks like that even though you don't see it manifesting, you know, who Jesus is and you know, the power of God to touch, not just individuals, but also our pets and creation. And that you are declaring the healing power over arrow every single morning. And I loved that. Like that just, I was like, this is what it is. This is what it means to walk out your faith every day. And just the passion in which, you know, the love that you poured into arrow and it just, it just touched my heart. Okay. So here was the one that challenged me the most. So I loved only because I was there. uh, There's so many that I loved, but because I was there so, um, and saw you every day, that's why bright eyes. I wanted to talk about that, but in, um, number 14 in devotional number 14, it is the importance of rest. We do not understand the rest. And I thought, Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you had this quote. Okay. And you talk about the dog days of summer. Right. And, and how, you know, I was like, Oh, if my life was like a dog, that'd be great. But then, um, on page 80 in there, you said, um, we rest in God so we can get the rest of him, which was so good. Yes, we need physical rest, but we also need spiritual rest. We need to lay down our burdens at the feet of Jesus and just rest in him. To me, this is true recovery rest. And then you um, had Hebrews four. And then you just said, notice at the end of this verse, what it says that we strive to enter rest. Wait, what? And I was like, I read that and I was already, wait, what, before you wrote it. And I was like, what? I mean, cause I had just read it before we have to work to get to a place of rest. So this was, this is something that I think the, the American people need other, other countries, other people understand the importance of rest, but talk to me a little bit about the revelation that God gave you uh, for the importance of rest here. I believe that came when my dog recovered was recovering from, you know, surgery, a a minor surgery, this was scalp. And, and the doctor said he needs recovery rest. You know, where you have to put that little cone on their head, Yes. you know, so they don't chew on them, their sutures or whatever. And it's recovery rest. And I thought recovery rest, like that really like just cemented something in me. I never understood it. So I remember that story when I began writing. And so I started searching what the scripture says about rest and it's like wait we get we rest in him you know so we can get the rest of him and when we do that we become the best of us and father god himself gave us permission and example he worked and then he rested and he rested not because he was tired I believe it was because to show us to say, Hey, come to me. You're, you're tired. Come rest in me, rest on me, get the best of me, get the, be the best of yourself. Recovery rest is what we all need. And I think the enemy's greatest tool, especially like you said, Debbie, for the American society is busyness. Mm -hmm. We're so good at being busy. And, you know, there's a lot of things that are good that we can devote our time to. And although they may be good things, 
they may not be God things. That's so good for us. Mm-hmm. And we have to really, we really, I mean, this sounds a little cliche, but ask daddy, God for permission. Yeah. Is this what you want me to do? Is this a good thing for me to do? Because being busy all the time, Martha was busy all the time. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said, Oh, Martha, girl, you're wearing yourself out. But Mary has chosen. Yeah. She has done the better thing. Yeah. Because he knows what we can draw from him, the strength, the power, the love, the rest, the revelation when we go to him first and get from him everything we need. Yeah. Every day. Every day. And and it's so and it's so true because I think sometimes we get stuck doing a good thing, but it's not God's best thing for us. Mm -hmm. And I always would tell people I can come up with some really good ideas, but I don't want good ideas. I want God ideas. And those are the things that I want to make sure that I'm doing. Okay. So I have one more thing that I want to talk about from your book. And then I want you to talk about your ministry. Um, so chapter, um, not chapter. Well, I guess it is like, but devotional day 19 and 20, which is coming with gifts and more is caught than taught. I thought this, I'm a gifts person. That's another reason why we connect so well is like, we're both gifts people. But I thought that the lesson that you had here for us, it was so good is that, you know, that scout who is on the cover of the book was would hear you coming and would go and grab a toy and would come and meet you at the door because he was bringing you a gift. And then, um, and then when you got arrow and arrow was a puppy, so I'll let you tell that, but I just thought it was so great because the spiritual where the way you take the lessons that you see in the dogs and then tie them to scripture and bring them out is so beautifully laid out that, um, that this book is appropriate for children all the way up to those in their nineties and above. Um, and, and really for believers and non believers, because Roxanne, the way that you present uh, the devotionals in this book is non-threatening, but truth dropping bombs, like for an unbeliever. And that's your evangelist heart. That's who you are. You just live by example and you live by love. And it just exudes out of every page. I just want you to know that. So talk to me about this 19 and 20 about coming with gifts and more is caught than taught. So, um, Arrow, Scott would always come and bring me a gift every time he heard me, he'd bring me his favorite toy and meet me at the back door with his tail wagon. And then Arrow, you know, of course I give him accolades and thank him. Yeah. And then Arrow saw Scout getting all that love and joy. He would try to fight. He would try to fight for that toy so he could get the attaboys and the accolades. And uh, anyway, but it was just such a simple, innocent yeah. thing that here he was given scott was giving me the very best he had you know for yeah. what was his greatest possession in all the yeah. world that one little stuffed animal that he loved so very much and uh now arrow every single time brings me that toy every, the same one actually really <laughs> yeah the same one and and it goes in in chapter 20 because more is caught than taught yeah we teach by example yeah our children our spouses strangers friends co-workers whatever we teach by example i learned that term from my friend victoria osteen yeah who uh told me about morris caught than taught and um i love that because it's so true you know people don't always remember what you say but they do always remember how you behave yeah, and what, what you, how you make them feel. Mm-hmm. And I think we can always do that even in the world, even today when people aren't even smiling at anybody anymore, we're hidden behind masks. And, and when I see people like that, Debbie, and I, I say to them, ah, oh, I can see you're smiling under there. I can see your smiling eyes. And, you know, then they light up more and we just have to take time to, see people and yeah. and recognize yeah. them and call them out because people need to know that they're seen. The father sees us, right? Yeah, absolutely. People need to know that they matter mm-hmm. and uh, we can still take a minute to do it. Yeah. That's so good. That's so good. Okay. So Roxanne, tell us a little bit about hope and glory ministries and how that came about and um, what it entails. 
Oh, wow. So you kind of mentioned it in my bio at the beginning. I was run over by a car when I was a senior in high school where the car actually rolled across my face. And I have a picture my dad took with five steel belted radial tire tread imprint across my face. It should have smashed my head like a pancake. I don't know why it didn't. And it drug the car drug me 24 feet down the road. I was trapped underneath the car with the muffler sitting on my right leg, burning my leg out of seven layers of skin. It burnt through six of them. Mm. And uh, thank the Lord Jesus, I had that barrier to protect me or I would have lost my leg. Took two tow trucks off to pick my car up off of me. And you can imagine being drugged 24 feet down the road, what I looked like. Yeah. And the big, old, humongous strawberry that covered the entire back, my entire back yeah. was just raw. You know, all my clothes were just shredded off of me. But anyway, I really knew then when I came to like five days later, uh, that God had a calling on my life. And mm-hmm. I'd like to say I jumped right into it at that time and I didn't, but you know, Debbie, we're all in a sanctification process. That's true. We're all being renewed daily. We're all coming closer to the father's heart through Jesus Christ, his son. And um, so mine was a journey, you know? Yeah. But mine was you, too. One of us have a journey of a thousand steps, mm-hmm. but we have to know, no, no, no. That of those journeys of a thousand steps, Jesus Christ has already taken 999 of them. Yeah. We only need to take that one toward him and he receives us as, as his own. And, um, so that's what I did. And, um, then I think, you know, the big story about what happened in July of 2014, we were on vacation Mm -hmm. and, Lake Tahoe and my son's best friend, they boys were 19 years old at the time and he drowned in the bottom of Lake Tahoe. And I was watching them swim and they're grown, you know, young men, tons of people were in the water that day, July 31st of 2014. And anyway, when I found out that Jake had drowned and we were still in the boat, um, I just screamed at the top of my lungs and asked Jesus, Jesus, help Mm -hmm. Jesus save Jake. I screamed it so loud. Everybody on the beach heard me, but I needed lifeguards, but I know I needed the lifeguard Jesus himself to come in. And uh, God did a miraculous thing. Jake was at the bottom of the lake for 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. The guy that jumped down to the bottom of the lake and rescued him happened to be a 30 year ER nurse who happened to be going by on a paddle board uh, at the last minute who happened to be a born again believer. He jumped down to the bottom and, and he said all the way down, he was praying to see bubbles. He didn't see any bubbles, you know, cause Jake was so waterlogged. He pulled him up. Anyway, they worked on him for 25 minutes on the beach, trying to get a pulse, yeah. trying to get a heartbeat. No, no pupil movement, nothing. Uh, they life flooded him. He coded the entire time for 20 minutes to Reno in the helicopter. He got 45 minutes of CPR. And when we saw him that night, he was on full life support. They were trying to keep his heart beating so his parents could come and say goodbye. But the doctor told me he couldn't last one or two more hours like that. His blood was so poisonous from not having any oxygen. Yeah for that long. And so it was shutting down all of his organs. And I looked at the doctor and I just asked the doctor if I could touch him. He said, yes. And I went and laid my hands on him. And I just said, Jake, I declare a decree in the name of Jesus that you will live and you will not die. And you will declare for yourself the marvelous works of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Jake, you had the mind of Christ Jesus. And I lay my hands on his heart. I command you heart to beat in the manner in which Father God created you. I speak life to your lungs. I speak life to your liver. I speak life to your kidneys in the name of Jesus. Come to life. And I'd like to say he sprang up right then, but he didn't. And I waited for his prayers to get there. 
And I'll fast forward now. You can watch this movie on YouTube or. Yes, you can watch it on YouTube. Or, Maybe you should send me the link and we'll put it in the show notes for people. Cause it is, it is very moving. I mean, I've heard the story uh, from your perspective and then watching um, the, the video the on show. YouTube. Yeah. So keep talking though. Yeah. Cause there's, there's yeah. hope here people. Yes. But anyway, yeah. Hope against all, hope, all odds. Uh, 27 days later, he was back home in Houston, Texas, with nothing more than a Band-Aid on his neck where the tracheotomy had been. Now, I'd like to say we went from A to, to Z that fast. There was a lot of things that happened in between then, but yeah. we prayed and we stood on faith and we couldn't believe the reports of the doctor. Yeah. We had to stand on faith. And I just thank Jesus for um, allowing mm-hmm. this healing and he has no repercussions from that accident. Yeah. He is a, a strong 27 year old young man uh, that's full of life and love and the goodness of God. And there's there. We, that's where we are. Yeah. Which is so, it's so great because, because it just really is a testimony money for you and, and really a testament of the ministry God has called you into that the enemy wanted to stop the power of God that was going to move on your life from, you know, I mean, you're an evangelist, but healing is a part of who you are and understanding your authority and releasing that to other people. And she has on Facebook, she does prayers every Sunday night with her hope and glory ministries, where she tells people, drop your things. I'm going to come on. We're going to pray. And you've seen healings. You've seen things happen um, just as you've done Facebook lives. And then of course, every time you go minister, you pray for people and you pray for healing. Mm-hmm. And I was there with you in Coleman, Alabama. We saw healings happen. So, um, okay. One last uh, question. Well, a couple more questions, but first of all, what is, what is your current project that you're working on right now? Oh, well, hold on one second. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. Uh, so I'm an educator. I was in elementary education for mm-hmm. many, many years. And I knew that after I wrote my doc and preach, I would love to write a series of children's books. Mm-hmm. And so this, I would thought, well, I'll do it in a few years. But in October of right after this book released, yeah. I was at work still. And I was sitting there minding my business, own business. It was a Tuesday. And this whole poem began to download in my spirit. Yeah. And so I just sat down and I started typing and in 20 minutes, the manuscript for my newest project, the greatest gift mm-hmm. taken from chapter four of my book was just downloaded in my spirit just yeah. that fast. And so, um, I found an amazing illustrator, Rob Rice and uh, partnered with him and we got this book done. I'm going to release this book. It's although it could be used every year. It's a greatest gift. It talks about how we got scout for Rob as mm-hmm. a great gift for a little boy when he was in third grade on Christmas morning, but how all of mankind was given the greatest gift, mm-hmm. not in the form of a puppy, but in the form of a baby, the savior to the world. Yeah. And that's what this book teaches about Jesus. Yeah. And, and the it's greatest gift that we all were given. It is. And, and here's, here's how I knew I'm like, yes, I knew she was an evangelist, but now I really know it. So I'm going to have you back on the podcast. Cause we're going to talk about this when you actually get copies so people can buy them. And he, and here's what I is so beautifully illustrated, but the poem that the Holy spirit downloaded to you in 20 minutes is so good. This is a gift book that people are going to want to buy when you go to baby showers or you have christenings or any, anything like you have grandchildren, you're going to want to get this book, but we're going to, we're going to save that for when I actually get my copy and when it's actually live so people can do it, but it's going to be like the best Christmas stocking gift gift ever. Um, and so with that, um, Roxanne, how can people get a copy of my dog can preach? How can they connect with you and, uh, give us all the details on that. And then we're going to uh, sign off for today. Um, you can buy my dog can preach right now on amazon.com. Last I checked, they were like, they had them way marked down. It was amazing. Huh. Uh, the hard covers, even like, yes, they are hard covers. <laughs> And I do have a paperback as well. And I do have an audio as well, but, uh, 
you can get it at amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, Target, Walmart, everywhere. You can go to mydogcanpreach.com mm-hmm. uh, and order an autograph copy, and I can mail it out to you, whichever you want. So I think you I know that. she does autograph them. I have mine, although I'm her personal friend, so I'm sure she wrote more to me. But she does sign them. She does sign them. So yeah, uh, and also, um, also, um, you can connect with me on www.hopeandgloryministries.com mm-hmm. you can connect with me on facebook like you said i do a prayer and praise that's what i call it yeah. 7 p.m central time every single sunday night and we just do a facebook live and we meet and we pray together and god has been showing up so big on those yeah uh, podcast and maybe it's funny because every once in a while i'll pray for somebody's finances on there yeah do an overall blanket finance and when i'm praying for the people i've done this twice both times i i got blessed as well with unexpected checks in the mail Woohoo! I know it's like crazy. Like you pray for everybody else and then it happens for you and you're like woo! yeah so that was fun <laughs> and um Anyway, well, maybe that's how we should end today's podcast episode. Maybe you should release a prayer over us. Hi, Arrow. I, to do I see Arrow. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he look, he's looking at you. I, he sees. We're besties. We're besties. Yeah, Arrow and I so are besties. <laughs> he's sweet. Anyway, so uh, yes, Hope and Glory Ministries. I got ordained through Joan Hunter Ministry. Yeah. And then. Never dreaming I was going to have my own ministry, right. honestly. But then later that same year, I began to get visions and dreams. Yeah. yeah. Like major blueprints downloaded. And they kept coming in succession and so vivid. I could remember I was never a dreamer before. And all of a sudden I'm having these huge dreams and, yeah. and visions. And that's never happened to me before. And I finally just said, like, God, what are you doing? What is this? And it dawned on me, you know, after praying and and seeking the Lord, that he was giving me a vision for my own ministry that he wanted me to love it. And anyway, so you know what I did, Debbie? I said, okay, Father, what do you want me to do? And he said, do the next thing. Mm. And I always knew what the next thing was. I didn't know what three steps ahead were, but I knew what the next thing was. So good. And so I would do the next thing. And then I'd say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, do the next the thing. thing. And it was just one step at a time. I felt like he was just holding my hand and walking me through and do the next thing. And finally, the next thing was apply for uh to be an llc yeah you know and i did that and i got that back in eight days and you and i both know it's a miracle it is it is a number of new beginnings and it's a miracle (laughs) and then when i did my uh, 501c3 when i knew the next thing was for that and i remember being in my office that day and just laying hands on the computer screen before we hit send. And I just felt the power of the Holy ghost all over me because tears just started flowing out of my eyes and I felt the Lord's blessing on it. And I just committed it all Lord. Yeah. this is you. This is you. I'll be faithful. I'll be obedient. But this is for you, Jesus. You know, you, you've paid the price. You mm-hmm. deserve every bit of glory and honor, Jesus. I take nothing. This is you. And do you know that I got my 501c3 letter of approval in 16, one, six days, 16 <laughs> days. Another miracle. Another miracle. I and know because I went through that process with Dirty Year. She's never seen it. Yeah. And I've been told six months to two years. And a lot of times they won't accept your first one. Yep. So I knew God's hand was all over it. That's how Hope and Glory Ministries was birthed. And and we just believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. My byline is my passion is people. My purpose is connecting their hearts to the heart of God, the Father. Yeah. And I wrote this book, like you said, because there's a generation, an X and a Y and a Z generation Mm -hmm. that doesn't know the Lord Jesus. Yeah. 
but they know their dog. They buy homes so their dogs can have a backyard. Yeah. They spend thousands, multi, I mean, billion dollar industry on their pets. And if they could pick up this book mm-hmm. and somehow relate the love of God yep. with the love that they know that they have for their dog and that their mm-hmm. dog has for them. And, and the Lord could begin to open their heart and let his love be shed abroad in their heart. And they're like, wait, you mean really God loves me like that? He knows me like that? So, yes, it's an evangelism tool and whatever else yes. the Lord wants to use it for. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is awesome. So I'll put in the show notes links so that they can get to all of the places that you reckon, um, that you're not recommended that you told people that they could get to my dog can preach, um, by Roxanne worship Roxanne. Is there anything that you want to like release over us in a prayer as we close out today's episode? Sure. I'd be, well, thank you, Debbie, so much for this. You're so I love welcome. you with all my heart and thank you for all your time and all the oh. seeds, of just greatness you've sown into oh. me. I'm so grateful. Father, we just come in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord Mm -hmm. God, that we're two or three are gathered, no matter how far apart we are, because there's no distance in prayer. Mm -hmm. We are absolutely united when we come under the power and the lordship, the authority of Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. So it's in his mighty name we come. And Lord, you said, come, come all of you, come into my presence, come with great thanksgiving, come into my courts with praise Mm -hmm. and So, Father, we do that because we are grateful children, so grateful that you've called us and that you've chosen us, so grateful, Lord God, that you've saved us with the blood of Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. so grateful, Lord God, that we can come as a body united, and Lord, you said that when we are united, where there's unity, you command a blessing So, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to bless every single one of these listeners on Debbie's podcast, Dare to Hear Today. Father, you know their needs. You know the number of hairs on their head. You know them because you created them. And, Father, for those who need a healing, we release the healing virtues of Jesus Christ. Yes. By his stripes, we are healed. So let the manifestation of that healing come forth. Mm -hmm. Father, though, for those that need a a healing in their finances and a touch, you are Jehovah Jireh. Mm -hmm. You are the God who provides. And, Father, there's a truth, a biblical and a spiritual and a physical truth that when you give seed to the sower, And that we have to not eat that seed, afraid we're not going to get any more. But do just like the little widow did. She didn't take that last bit of oil. She didn't take that last bit of flour Mm -hmm. and eat it. She prepared it and she she sowed it into the prophet. And then she had more than enough to sustain her. Mm -hmm. Lord, and to pay off all her debt. So God, we get a seed into the ground. And then you bring forth life from it. So, Father, I'm asking you Mm -hmm. in Jesus name that you would bless and touch Mm -hmm. your people, that you would throw open the windows of storehouse blessings and that they would be raining down bountiful, abundant blessings more than they can contain. Mm -hmm. And God, that they would be so mindful that your funds, kingdom finances and kingdom funds run through a funnel. Mm-hmm. That we have a hand open to receive, but Lord, our other hand is always open to extend. Yes. And Father, you said that if we're faithful with a little, you know that we can be faithful with much. Mm-hmm. God, let that principle just sink deep into our spirits. God, yes. it's not about my four and no more. Mm-hmm. It's about kingdom and advancing the kingdom and sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus and about loving people to wholeness and to healing Mm -hmm. lord Mm -hmm. it's the goodness of god yes that leads us to repentance that's what your word says Mm -hmm. so father i bless all the hears lord and father not that we would just be hears and be sponges to soak it all up and contain it but father god that we would be doers of your word Mm -hmm. that we would so order our lives after the example of christ that we will walk in great humility mm-hmm. and great love and mm-hmm. great kindness 
Father, obedient to you and ever listening mm-hmm. to your mm-hmm. subtle voice, your, your still small voice, that whisper. And Father, we just want to say that we love you so much. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, this day, give us an assignment. Mm-hmm. Let us be mindful. Let us have ears to see and, and eyes, pardon me, ears to hear and eyes to see. Yeah, Lord. That which you would have us do. And Lord, we just thank you that we're allowed to partner with you in your work. Mm-hmm. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised. Yes. And Lord, may your praise be continually on our lips because mm-hmm. you alone are worthy. I bless Debbie. I bless her ministry in the name of Jesus. Father, I just know what she's done in my own life. And I'm just one of countless mm-hmm. thousands of others. Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus for a great increase, greater still increase. Father, even where you've planted her and John right now, that, Father, you would begin to open up a mighty harvest in front of her. Mm -hmm. Lord, that you would bring laborers to her side. Father, that you would give her every single resource that she needs, every bit of finance. Lord, enough to do the work and enough to pay a prophet's honor to her. God, none of it's too hard for you. It all belongs to you. And I thank you, Father, for doing that. Lord, I just thank you ahead of time for doing that. Mm -hmm. Pray increase over the people of God. Lord, that we would so let our lights shine. That others would see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Mm Mm-hmm. Let them see Jesus when they encounter us. Let them feel the love of Jesus when they encounter us. Lord, open up and let us be brave. Let us be bold to talk about Jesus. Not just God, because there's many gods, only one true God. I get that. Mm -hmm. But when when some people hear the word God, they may think of a, a fake God, like a Hindu God or Allah or something. But we speak of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. We speak of the true and the living God, the creator of all of heaven and earth, the father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our trying God. So, Lord, we be quick to speak the name of Jesus mm-hmm. and not be bashful and not beat people up but just to speak in love. Father, we just thank you so much for using us. We thank you so much for loving us, and we receive your love. And Lord, show us how to love you better. Mm -hmm. Show us how to minister to you best. Lord, I already know that answer, but I still have to be reminded. And that's to love your people. Love you with everything we have, Mm -hmm. and then love your people all people, till everyone knows your name, Jesus. Mm -hmm. We pray it and we receive this word. We seal it with great love and we pray it all in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So Roxanne's dog can preach, but Roxanne can preach too. And you just heard it there in her prayer. And there was so much for so many people in today's episode, Roxanne. So one, thank you for being on the podcast today Two, Thank you for writing my dog can preach. I'm going to have you back because we're going to talk about your children's book because it's so beautiful. And I just, I'm so excited for that. And And I just, I love you. I love you. I love how you went from an acquaintance and a Facebook friend to a real life friend. So thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being the light of Jesus. Yes. Thank you for being the light of Jesus. And I just, I can't wait till I get to spend time with you again. So thank you for, for today. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you for listening to dare to hear the podcast where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. Thank you for listening today. I'm Debbie Kitterman. If you've been encouraged in any way, we would absolutely love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our podcast, and share this out and leave us a review and comments where you can, and just help us get the word out about Roxanne, about her ministry, about her books, and just share, 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 share this. So we look forward to seeing you next week on another episode of Dare to Hear the Podcast. Until then, God bless and goodbye. Bye-bye.
Yeah. Mm -hmm.